what is up fellas hope y'all having a great day today because we have gathered here today to go over records of ragnarok chapter 84. now i've been liking the energy i've been receiving so far but they've been sending some heavy hitters for us at the home base so i need y'all to support by continuing to subscribe and like the video please i appreciate you all as always on to a quick recap of the previous chapter the gods and their audience bask in apollo's victory over leo whilst commending Apollo for even being able to stand after those heavy blows. But that's Apollo for you. He's always willing to put on a show for the audience. To show his respect for Leo and Geru, he decides to keep his face scar as proof that he fought them with all his soul. We cut back to the humans and the Spartans who are naturally distraught by Leo's death, but they still stand strong admiring him and still believing that Sparta is the strongest. The other human fighters praise Leo for standing up to the sun god so valiantly and never backing down. However, Okita and Kondo express their jealousy that Leo was able to fight like that till the end. Here it is implied they didn't get to die how they wanted to when they were alive with their physical bodies. Meanwhile, Gary is upset that she lost another Valkyrie sister but also realizes that we are in the end game since two more losses will equal humanity's eradication. Knowing of this fact, Brunhilde is extremely stressed and doesn't know who to pick. Luckily, Okita comes to offer himself to be the next challenger. Brunhilde trusts Okita to win the next one since he is known as the strongest manslayer. Okita gives his thanks and is ready to fight. We are brought to the gods having a meeting and get to see Shiva in good condition with his arms back. Zeus called all the remaining gods except for Beelzebub and Apollo to discuss who the next fighters will be to end Ragnarok in two rounds. First appearance Anubis offers himself as he states that he is excited and can barely contain himself. Zeus and the other gods agree to let him go until Susano comes in making also his first appearance and claims he will go next. Anubis disagree and still plans to go next, however Susano is very adamant that he will go next no matter what Anubis says. Anubis gives up and lets Susano go next. Zeus is curious as to why he is so persistent and here we learn that Hermes listened in on Brunhilde's next fighter choice then told Susano Okita was next and he is the strongest manslayer. Upon hearing Okita's title, Susano felt that it would be fitting to go against himself as he is the strongest god slayer with his kendo style. How will these two fighters interact with each other and does Okita have what it takes to bring the human score to being tied with the gods again? Now for this new chapter, we start off with Brunhilde running into the chief god Odin who warns her that the fate of humanity and her life will end after the tournament. Brunhilde cleverly sees through the ruse and realizes it's just Loki impersonating him. Before walking away, Loki states that he actually came to save Brunhilde from her fate. Naturally, Brunhilde is confused and Loki goes on further to explain that the gods will win the humans stand no chance and Odin will kill Brunhilde for starting Ragnarok. Brunhilde still remains unfazed and Loki suggests that he could talk with Odin to at least spare her since the other gods won't care about saving a demigod like her. Loki also believes that he can save her since he is held in high regard by Odin and he himself states he does not want to see any unnecessary killing. Once again Brunhilde knows something is up. She smiles and asks Loki if he would want something in return. Surprisingly, Loki fumbles his words about whether he wants something in return or not and before he could continue, Brunhilde thanks and reassures that it doesn't even matter if she is the sole survivor, she'll do what is necessary. Loki then reveals that he knows she's doing all this in order to save Siegfried which startles Brunhilde for a moment but she keeps her composure and says that's none of his business. Before leaving, she reminds him that they'll win 
humanity will be saved and Loki should really worry about himself instead. We then cut to Loki being in his room, reminiscing about the conversation they just had. During the scene, we are not only shown that he has a doll replica of Brunhilde, and he also declares his love for Brunhilde. Now we actually do cut to the real Odin walking through the halls with Buddha appearing and asking Odin if everything is going according to his plan. Odin attempts to disregard Buddha, however Buddha questions Odin on Siegfried. He states that Siegfried has been imprisoned in Tartarus and is having Kintoki investigate the situation. Odin's birds remind Buddha that Siegfried is the god of great sins and he should naturally be imprisoned. However, Buddha argues that yes, while Siegfried took Odin's sword and killed his dragon Fafnir, these crimes are not grievous enough to be sent to Tartarus, unlike doing something like betraying the heavens or killing a chief god. Usually, if someone pisses off Odin, they are simply annihilated, but this wasn't the case, which was suspicious to Buddha. He continues to elaborate that he realizes that Brunhilde started Ragnarok in order to save humanity and her boyfriend Siegfried, but knows Odin would never allow Siegfried to be freed from prison, and Buddha wonders why that's the case. Could Siegfried be important to Odin? Odin begins to get infuriated at being questioned and gives off a presence that spooks both Odin's birds and Buddha himself. Odin conjures a divine weapon revealing it to be a sacred treasure called Gunnir. Odin says he does not care what Buddha suspects and anyone who tests him will be crushed and destroyed, all while emitting such a force that it damages the hallways. Buddha gets ready to scrap with Odin and before he could, we get an unforeseen appearance from Beelzebub who defends against Odin's attack while also wanting to know about Buddha's theory and Odin's motives for that long wish he mentioned earlier before round 7. Beelzebub ponders that Odin could possibly be doing all this to resurrect the genesis of the universe, Archie, also known as the primordial god. Everyone gives a shocked expression while Odin displays his most vile smile ever. Finally, we cut back to the Ragnarok arena and it shows that it changed a city located in Japan called Kyoto during the end of the Edo period. Round 10 Susano versus Okita battle will now begin and the chapter end. Now this is by far the juiciest chapter with no fight that we ever gotten. So much new information was revealed like Loki having a deep affection for Brunhilde, why Siegfried is placed in Tartarus, Odin's divine weapon, and the most crucial info being Odin's goal to resurrect this god called Archie being the primordial god. Honestly, I still don't trust Loki because naturally he's a troll or trickster. However, after seeing him declare his love in private and having a creepy Brunhilde doll really convinces me that he really might be in love with Brunhilde. Even though I feel like it really came out of nowhere, out of left field, but who knows, maybe I saw some hints or signs that I didn't or missed. However, I'm very curious to see how Loki will proceed from here on out, especially knowing Brunhilde has her heart set on Siegfried. Maybe Loki might fight Siegfried for Brunhilde's love. Also, quick note, Loki was capping this chapter, saying Zeus was having fun with this tournament, he's held in high regards with Odin and doesn't want unnecessary killing. Excuse me? Is this nigga serious? Zeus literally lost two of his brothers, one being Hades, which is definitely his most favorite and loved one. He low-key had his pride shattered when he also couldn't make Adam, a human slash mortal, bend the knee even after he died. Then we know Odin doesn't really seem to mess with Loki that heavily and finally with the unnecessary killing, like my dude was willing to kill Buddha and the other human fighters outside of a match while round 5 was going on. If Odin and Zeus didn't intervene, he would have went to town on them. Unnecessary killing my ass. Try again next time Loki. 
Also, please get rid of that creepy doll he has. I never thought Loki was this down bad for Brunhilde. It was also cool to see Buddha and Beelzebub make an appearance again, and it seems that they really might team up to fight Odin for a bit. I'd love to see a whole chapter about that. Siegfried is finally popping up more and more. We got some more lore about him, and he seems pretty powerful if he was able to kill Odin's dragon too. We finally get an actual confirmation that Brunhilde is dating Siegfried, and Odin's weapon actually looks pretty wicked. Can't wait to see him use it in a full battle. Odin himself is looking pretty fierce and dummy strong. It was fascinating to see a glimpse of what he is truly capable of. Side note, I wonder what would happen if Beelzebub didn't come in because Buddha was really ready to fight without his divine weapon since it broke from his match. I mean, yeah, he has future sight, but Odin knows that, has seen Buddha's moves and seems like an intelligent fighter, so I'm sure he would have some plan to counter and defeat Buddha. It was also cool to see the arena go through another big change. Can't wait to see how Okita Osusuno will use the environment to their advantage like Jack did against Heracles. Lastly, I'm very intrigued by this primordial god that Odin wants to resurrect, and I wonder why that's his goal. Seeing all the remaining gods that fought before come around again really makes me think that all of them might team up with the humans to defeat this primordial god that also seems very powerful. By the way, this Odin smile will forever be nightmare fuel to me. Anyways, I really enjoyed this chapter a lot and that's all I have for y'all today. Subscribe for more future chapter reviews and to follow the story even further with me. Thank you all once again for the support through the likes and subscribing means a lot that y'all will take your time out of the day to watch my videos and don't forget to comment on what you thought about the chapter and what your predictions are for the next one. I really do enjoy reading your thoughts in the comments and with that I'll let y'all go. Take it easy out there. Have a great day and I'll catch y'all later. Peace.